What's going on guys, como estan, and welcome back after three freaking long weeks. Welcome back to the channel for another video. Today we'll be doing a video which I certainly wasn't really thinking of doing and that video is Barcelona losing 3-0 against AS Roma in the Champions League. Certainly one of the most shocking moments of my entire life and certainly one of the most shocking moments of the Champions League history ever because Barcelona were utterly humiliated. As a disclaimer, I just want to say that I actually didn't watch the match. I didn't watch any match of Barcelona in this quarterfinals and that just tells you a lot. So where was I? So why was I missing for so long? Well, if you didn't know already, I finished college, you know that, I'm 18, and then I went necessarily to my next step and that would be university. So I want to do game design. And for game design, you need a little bit more guidance normally, so university seems like the right step in the right direction. So I seeked out for the UK to look at four universities. I actually got accepted for five of them. So I went there, discussed, had some interviews with professors and also with like the main heads of the universities trying to, you know, sell out and find the best option for me. So that was what I was doing. I obviously couldn't take my whole setup. I took my gaming laptop to play some, you know, Far Cry 5 that just came out recently. So I played that, I played some Siege, you know, just to entertain myself, but I couldn't take my microphone, all the cables, all of that. That was going to be a huge, huge load. So I decided to take this break and then come out with full propulsion blasters coming back here because we got the World Cup coming really soon. So all the content needs to be of better quality and needs to be very, very, you know, coming out sooner. So that's why I decided to take a break and then come right here with more energy. So just, I, I arrived three hours ago to Peru and I'm here already sitting down doing another video. Moreover, I was watching actually the 3 nil win of Liverpool versus Manchester City. Yes, I went to Anfield live from the stadium. I was there watching this match, so I definitely wouldn't have had the time to watch the Barcelona match because they're obviously at the same time. And then I was in a flight from London to Madrid while the Champions League match of also Barcelona versus Roma was going on. So I didn't watch that and I basically didn't have any option to, to watch Barcelona. And I think that that's a big, big statement, and I'm going to explain to you why. So in this video, we're going to take a look at all the reasons why I think Barcelona can crash it out of the Champions League. This is going to be more informal. I'm going to give you all the reasons down below, and we're going to go with them in order. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is why did we underestimate Roma so much? This is probably the first time ever I underestimated a team. I'm not those people, not that person who really, you know, thinks huge of the club that it's like oh we're gonna beat them so easily but for instance even Barcelona played Deportivo Alaves or something like that I always try to look for the positive in the opposition team because I always think that if you go too you know too big to bolster you go too more like almost like bragging about I think that's when you lose and you really really are humiliated in those senses just like Barcelona did yesterday so in this sense I underestimated Roma I gotta say this is the very first time I underestimated a team I gotta say that just from the start, even from the draw, I was so happy that Barcelona had that huge advantage over a team like Roma because even though Roma beat Barcelona, we gotta be honest and say that Barcelona is definitely one step above from Roma. And Roma here showed that that's not always the case. So, moreover, gotta say that that result, that initial result for one, was also very quite mistaken. It was a huge, huge mistake to take that performances by the result because Barcelona played really, really bad. Even though I didn't watch the game, that first game, I came in and watched it later in highlights and all of that. And Barcelona didn't create too many chances. They created decent enough chances. They weren't able to finish them. They were not as clinical, but Roma was completely devouring Barcelona in the first half, even though Barcelona went to the tie with um, one nil up. So I gotta say that it's really, really mistaken. Barcelona also got then another own goal, a goal from Pique from a rebound, and then another uh, defensive mistake from Manolas, I think it was, for the final goal from Suarez. So it's really, really quite a really mistaken result. We shouldn't have been taking that from granted. And that's something that I think the players and also fans really took into account coming to this match. We were all a little bit too confident, and especially the fans, because I didn't had I didn't really cared about the match. I was already thinking on the plane, like saying, oh, I would like to see Barcelona play Liverpool, when we still had to dispute another 90 minutes. And that tells you a lot. 
probably like me, there were many other Barcelona fans around the globe thinking the same thing. And even the players out there thinking, playing the match, they were probably like, oh, we, we should try and, you know, keep the ball, be a little bit more quiet in this time around because then the match against Valencia is going to be really, really tough. We need to break the record, etc, etc, etc. So that's where they really went wrong. And most of us did as well. Moving on, we're going to talk about... Valverde and even though I say that Valverde don't doesn't have Valverde doesn't have anything to blame here We cannot blame any other than the players really But there's something that Valverde did that I think that really contributed for this defeat Not necessarily in this game exactly but most of all in the games prior We all saw Messi not playing against Argent and not not against Argentina Not playing against Spain and also not playing against Italy because they say he was injured then he was rested against, um, I don't remember the game exactly, but he was rested the game after the international break. And then he played this match against Leganes when he just scored like a hat trick. So he was like, from an injury, he just quickly, you know, plays a hat trick too fast and never really covered from fitness. And like that, there were many other players like Busquets, players like um, Suarez who have been playing game after game after game. We see the same from Iniesta playing too many minutes. People like Piqué who never really, you know, recovered from his knee injury. So we see a lot of players like this. And at the end of the time, when they Barcelona needed to get, I don't know, just into go that extra mile, trying to put that extra effort, trying to go a little more ultra attacking like we do in FIFA, they didn't have the energy to do it. It's more especially because all the first team 11 players played every single week in and week out. And that's something that is not, not can be easily forgot, forgiven because rotations are there for somebody. You have squad depth for a reason. Even though we said it quite good against Leganes and people like Dembele and Coutinho didn't play against uh, Roma, it's still not a reason to forgive that. I gotta say, it's sort of like a low battery, you know? Because we were coming into this match quite with a low battery. So at any time, we could just shut down. And that's what happened in this match. I think that the players were too tired or were too... Not too tired, but more, most of all, like, too pressured. They played too many games, and that's when you just see that Barcelona completely shut down in this match. And normally, you want... As a phone, for instance, you have a phone, I was in a flight, you want to keep the battery alive as longer, as much as you want. But at the end of the time, there's this stuff when just goes red and says like, oh, you got 10 battery percent remaining. And that's when you really get scared. And that's what happened in Barcelona here. We got scared. We saw that we were already in like the red level of low battery and we just shut down completely. And that's something that Valverde should take the blame for. But I don't think actually his reading of the game was so bad. I think he actually did very, very good because we cannot blame him for him starting the same people that he started against Roma in the home leg because they did an amazing job even though like i said before the 4-1 defeat you gotta say that if they lost for instance 2-2 you may want to change something but if they won 4-1 there's no reason to actually change it before i move on to the next point i just want to do a little side note as well that perhaps you may say like oh you're a barcelona by by death but you're not mad you're not having that emotion but well i do have that emotion i had that initial reaction right away in the airport seeing barcelona getting knocked out but i didn't saw the match I didn't saw the match at life, neither the home near away leg. So that's something that really contributes a lot. And I think that's good for an analysis standpoint of view because I'm not putting my emotions in front of it. I'm actually trying to give the most honest reaction possible and the better analysis that I can give you. So with that being said, we need to also talk about Roma because Roma did an actually perfect match. They played really, really well. And that's all for one man, Eusebio Di Francesco. Eusebio Di Francesco is an upcoming manager, I think he's like 44 years old, so he's really really young for a manager. And he has been playing very very attacking football for Rome. For a very time now before, I think he was at Lazio? I don't know where he was before, before Roma, but I knew he also played in a very attacking team. Perhaps at Atalanta, I'm not too sure. But he played very very good football now in Roma, and he never really detracted from that philosophy of trying to give attacking football. Not like Pep Guardiola, for instance. Pep Guardiola changed Gundogan in that match against Liverpool because he knew was like, oh, I don't know if it's going to work. He doubted himself. Osevedo Francesco didn't doubt himself. Papa Francesco is here. And this guy was so, so good. Because Francesco decided to take away uh, a forward for a new... For, for including, to include a new defender in the side. They played with five at the back. And that just gave them that extra ability to cancel Barcelona out, to give them enough attacking power 
to attack Barcelona and pressure them up top, but whenever Barcelona wanted to go into a counter-attack that was Florenzi and there was Kolarov, Juan Jesus, Facio and Manolas ready to cancel out the counter-attack. So that's very, very high praise. Not too many teams can attack Barcelona and then be susceptible and not be susceptible to a counter-attack. Roma were amazing at that. They defended good, but they attack even better. And that's something that we have to praise Eusebio Di Francesco, especially with the players they have. Colaro, 31 years old. Facio, who is not the fastest. Juan Jesus, who has never really been a huge star. Inter, quite unreliable. And now at Roma. So he was quite, quite good, I gotta say. Nine Golan coming in, a huge boost. Struman alongside him, also very, very good. So we all gotta mention that a very, very good performance for Roma. They got the first goal right away. I gotta say, Umtiti, what are you doing? Umtiti never even pressured Checo for the first goal. And it was just like, what are you doing? He needed to pressure down Checo. And Checo just, you know, being this huge, one of the best targets man, target man in the world right now. He just blasted it over Thursday. And it was so, so, like, it was impressive. They got the initial goal then. And then they pressured in the second half at the start as well to get the second one. And Barcelona never even string three passes together. Barcelona, Roma, sorry, they were pressuring Barcelona so high up the pitch, then canceling out his counter attack so easily, and Barcelona were struck with fear. Barcelona, in the first goal, they saw it coming. Okay, the second one, we need to get out of this, guys. When the second happened, they couldn't even believe it, and they already were seeing the third goal coming in. So that's something very, very huge from Roma. I gotta say, they played a very, very good match, and we also need to praise and give a little bit of credit to them. Because it's not only that Barcelona just lost it, but Roma won it. So with that being said, I gotta be really honest with you guys in this one. I gotta be very, very disappointed, and I actually feel very, very humiliated for this defeat. Even though I didn't watch the match as a Barcelona fan and ever, like I always gonna say, I feel like it's just a part of my life. And when somebody something crumbles, you know, in your life, it's just so sad. And seeing Barcelona being unbeaten in La Liga, being in the final of the Copa del Rey already, but losing out in this matter against Roma, it's not good at all. It doesn't settle well, and it's just a huge blow for Barcelona. And from now, I'm really not that confident, because next year we have the same players, the same thing, everything's gonna be the same. I don't think there's gonna be too many changes, and it seems that just has gone completely wrong. And this is where doubt, stops, doubt starts, starts to feel yourself, starts to feel inside Barcelona fans, because you're wondering whether Valverde and the new system is gonna be good enough to finish it off. And it's just worrying. I'm all in with Valverde. He's probably one of the best managers I've seen Barcelona handle. He has better numbers than Luis Enrique and Pep Guardiola. His philosophy at the end of the day is quite pragmatic. And I don't know if it's the best way to handle European matches. Perhaps trying to do a combination of pragmatism for La Ligue, for La Ligue, for La Liga, and then put in a little more attacking football with a 4-3-3 like we normally you do against the Champions League could be a very good option, but that's something that Valverde only knows. And I think that he may turn it around, but we need to keep support of Alberto. He has a two-year contract now with the club, and we also need we need to give him that extra year to see what, what he can really do. That's going to be everything for today, guys. Just like always, please remember to drop us a like and also leave us a subscribe. I was thinking of doing a similar video for Manchester City and looking at all the reasons why they were knocked out in the Champions League, because as we know, Manchester City were one of the main favorites to win this competition all around. So it's really, really disappointing to see that two big favorites in Barcelona and Manchester City are knocked out in the same round. Now we have Liverpool and Roma, two very, very good attacking footballing teams. So it will be very interesting to see because at the end of the day, if we have good attack like Roma and Liverpool, anything can happen. So I don't know if it's the best trade-off, but it's still quite interesting. I gotta say that now I'm supporting Liverpool to win this. I really think Liverpool can do it. If they get a good draw in the next one, it will be very interesting to see what Liverpool can do if they reach the final. So see you in the next one. Take care. Ciao.